Hello and welcome back to the Snap Revise YouTube channel. I'm Amy and for this video we're going to talk about how you can develop your synoptic linking skills to be a much higher performing A-level student. A-level subjects are very content heavy and at first it seems like a lot to take in, but if you do a little bit of analysis of the specification and also have a look at some marking criteria from exams, you will see that students will be assessed on their ability to link concepts across the specification. This is something that students often find difficult to do, especially in their exams. So I'm going to give you some revision tips on building in synoptic linking so that when you come the exam you're going to be hitting those marks in the higher grade boundaries. Before we start however don't forget to follow Snap Revise on TikTok and on Instagram. We post daily with loads of little snippets of revision information, um, tips, tricks and hacks to help support you through your GCSEs or your A-level revision. By following us you're also able to give us feedback on the types of content that you'd like to see both on TikTok and Instagram and also here on YouTube. Let us know what kinds of videos will help you with your A-level revision which areas you feel like you need a bit more support in and we can definitely work to deliver that for you. Okay, so let's talk about synoptic linking. I'm gonna start with a piece of advice that I would give to any A-level student who starts in September. Um, it's a piece of advice that I wish I had myself and that is to view your A-level subjects holistically. So instead of turning up to each lesson and thinking about that one topic that you're going to be covering in that one lesson, have a think about how that topic sits in relation to everything else you understand about the subject so far. If I were you, I would also incorporate um, a way of physically recording this link. So whether you do it before your lesson going in, write a quick sentence about what the topic is going to be and some things to think about while you're in that lesson to link it a bit wider across the whole subject. Um, or you can do it at the end of the lesson where you write a few sentences about what you've learned today and how this links to what you knew before. Make these links as clear as you possibly can by using like a red biro pen or highlighting them just so that they are very obvious because they're going to be so, so valuable when it comes to doing your revision a bit later on, especially if you're going to be revisiting topics you haven't looked at for a few months. If you're halfway through your A-levels now and are thinking it's too late to start doing this, it absolutely is not. You can just maybe dedicate a revision session to going back through all of your previous lessons and linking them all together. Um, by doing this exact same thing but in one big session rather than at the end of each lesson. If you're lucky enough to have been watching this video at the start of your A-levels, then the next thing you want to do is to start dissecting your specification. In all of these videos that I do for advice, I feel like all I talk about is really getting to know your specification and understanding each of the constituent parts of it. But for this activity, what we really want to do is see how the specification is interconnected. Although each exam board is slightly different in what they demand from their A-level students. Uh, they are, all have one thing in common and that is that they want you to develop your skills in synoptic thinking and in linking topics across the specification. It comes up in every single spec. In OCR section 3F gives information on synoptic assessment and there are sections such as the how science works sections which clear up some of the coding that comes up in the main bit of the specification. I have them here just in front of me. So for example, um, HSW9, considering applications and implications of science and evaluate their associated benefits and risks. So this is a fantastic place to start with making synoptic links. The same with HSW5, analyze and interpret data to provide evidence. Um, recognizing correlations and causal relationships. So this is really encouraging that holistic approach that I was talking about earlier, making sure that you're linking in loads of different concepts that you're learning in your lessons to give an overall picture of science. I love this section in the OCR spec. Um, the critical thinking and the wider view that it encourages students to have is a fantastic grounding to base exam answers off. The AQA specification isn't quite as clear on synoptic assessment, um, but it kind of just states that students are encouraged to develop an ability to make links across the specification. And the same for edXL, um, very similar to AQA. It does indicate, however, where synoptic linking will be tested, so in paper three, um, and that's regardless of uh, whether you're doing edXL A or B. It will be paper three and it's either general and practical applications in biology or general and practical 
principles in biology. Despite each exam board being different in how it talks about your synoptic assessment, any resource that you can find online about synoptic linking is a really good resource to use. So don't be afraid to check out the OCR spec if you're doing AQA or Edexcel. A lot of the concepts and a lot of the content of your A-level specification is very similar. So you can use these resources and I would recommend that you do. So let's talk then about some revision practice that we can be doing to prepare ourselves for these synoptic assessments when it comes to your exams. First and foremost, practice making connections. You can start doing this simply by working through and physically drawing links. So connecting the different topics within your specifications with lines or with color coding to show where common themes are overlapping. Alternatively, if you're a fan of mind mapping, you can get a lot more creative with this. So using your spec and any other revision materials that you use, start to write out key and concise notes for each individual module across your specification and use a different color for different modules. This should eventually create a mind map with the central bubble being the name of your subject with um, all of the topics or the modules radiating out. So like I said, the key here is to be concise so that your page doesn't get too cluttered. Only include the kind of specification points that are needed for each module here. If you prefer making digital notes, there is a fantastic platform called Lucid Chart and the free version allows you to have up to three documents that you can edit. Um, which should cover you for your A-level subjects if you're doing three A-levels and then you can download and print off these notes um, so they're a little bit neater than just handwriting, whatever you prefer. So now you have your entire specification down on one piece of paper with each module in a different colour. We want to go through with a bold pen or with a really bright colour and draw those links in. We want to be thinking about common themes or overlapping processes, just anything that can draw these topics together. This is the key part of the activity so make the most of it. It and try to be as creative as possible when you're making these links. You could do this as a group and bounce ideas off each other um, and make it into a game sort of like word association. To make it even more challenging you could select two random topics um, and then try to form as many links as you can across those two topics. When you're drawing these links make sure that you are exactly clear on why you've made this link, where the evidence is for this link and how you could talk about this when it comes to an exam scenario. If you're more of a practical learner then you can do the same sort of activity but with post-it notes on a wall um, so you can write the topics on the post-it notes and move them around um, to show those links more creatively. Creative thinking might not be the first thing that comes to mind when you think about doing an A-level science but without creative thinking all of your A-level knowledge is basically redundant. Great scientific discoveries come off the back of previous scientific discoveries and by using a multidisciplinary approach to solving problems. It can be quite difficult to train yourself to think this way, especially as science is typically taught as quite a modular subject. But with regular creative thinking sessions like this one that I just talked about, you really will develop your skills as a scientist and you'll find that you're capable to take on bigger problems and be able to answer questions that you might have originally thought too complex for you to even try and tackle. Once you start thinking about all of the links and connections that there are between your A-level content, not just within subjects, but between subjects too, so you could be linking biology and chemistry, um, chemistry and physics, biology and physics, there is so much overlap once you start to think creatively about these subjects. So my challenge to everybody watching this now is with every new lesson you have going forward, can you spend five to 10 minutes forming a mental connection between the topic you've just learned about and every other topic that you've covered so far. If you're able to do that, you're well on your way to getting an A star in your A-level science. So before I end the video, I do want to give you a little bit of a pointer on how synoptic assessment could come up in your exam. Typically, it comes disguised as an unseen concept or in an essay question. I have actually already made a video about tackling unseen concepts in A-level biology because that seems to be where they crop up quite a lot. You can watch that just here, but so that I can kind of link exam practice to this video, here are um, a couple of pointers. The first pointer is that when you come across a question in an exam that seems very unfamiliar, the likelihood is that it is a synoptic assessment question. And therefore, you need to think creatively about how you can link this unfamiliar concept with more familiar concepts. When you're doing your own exam practice, so doing your past paper questions at home, spend as much time as you want really trying to tackle these kinds of questions. Um, don't think about how much time you have, just think about making those connections first. The same thing goes for essay answers. So instead of trying to think about answering the question 
in as short a time as you possibly can. First, have a think about how many links you can make from this question to your specification. Once you've managed to develop those um, linking skills, we can think about timing much later on. And this is where regular exam practice again will benefit you so much. In essay answers, what you want to do is think about how many topics this links to, how can I link all of those together and that to the question so that I'm nailing all of these marks. Planning out your answer is a must for these styles of question, um, also for the unseen concept question. Uh, you want these links to be convincing and strong. To do this, I would write right next to the question or right underneath the question which topic that question is relating to. If it's an unseen concept question, then doing this is just useful um, to help you clear up in your head what you're going to go forward and write about. We want consistency in our responses to these kinds of questions. Um, because consistency also shows that you've understood the question. It's so obvious when you answer an exam question in a confused and muddled way because it just shows the examiner that you don't really know what you're talking about and you haven't really developed any sort of skills in making connections. Through doing lots of this synoptic revision practice, so taking exam questions and just spending time on making these links, um, and forming your arguments in response, you'll find that your ability to recall these connections and actually talk about them gets so much stronger. And hopefully this style of question won't throw you off when it comes to the exam. Please do let us know in the comments if you have any other questions about synoptic linking in any of your A-level science subjects and I'll see if I can answer your questions and help you out. I really hope this video was useful for anybody that is watching and I hope that you give us a thumbs up and revisit this video at any point in your revision just to refresh yourself on synoptic assessment skills. For more support with your revision from Snap Revise, please do subscribe to our channel just here and check out some of our other videos like this one here.